in 1380, and it reached its culmination in 1879. And that was the time when we said, okay, we reached the peak of our development as far as our intellectual ability to think out of our own resources and analyze the world around us as an objective phenomenon, you know, where we are simply removed from the events and we're studying plants and animals and rocks and whatnot, and the human being. But that, so, so that developed our independence and the possibility of us becoming free. Because before that, we had no freedom. We were literally thought into by the spiritual hierarchies, especially the angels and archangels and archive. Um, Clara, I might be chopping at the bit here, but <clears throat> what is, because that's what I really want to know, I mean, what is the order of the universe as far as, you know, animals and nature and plants? I, you know, I've just been giving you a description of it, you know, we have a, we have a hierarchy of spiritual beings. We have the rocks, the mineral kingdom, we have the plant kingdom. Yeah, but what is the plant kingdom's and nature's order? Well, the, the seasonal round. Fall, winter, spring, summer. You know, the growth of, and decay of plants. You know, you plant the seeds come up in the spring, they produce flowers, they produce fruit in the fall, and we eat the fruit and then they die and then they come back in the next spring. That's the order as far as nature goes. But it's directed by the cosmos. See, the plant growth is the result of the activities of the spiritual beings that have to do with the planetary system, the moon and the sun. Obviously, you can't have plant growth without the moon and the sun, but the moon and the sun are spiritual beings. You know, that when we look at the sun as it rises in the day, what we are seeing is a physical mass manifestation of the activity of spiritual beings who reside in the sphere of activity of the sun. It's, a, it's, a, it's an illusion. If you take it literally that that's an orb circular, that's just an harmonic illusion. But this plant kingdom is ordered according to the planetary movement and the movement of the stars with respect to the, the movement of the plants with respect to the fixed stars. So it's totally orderly. So when you look at nature, you can predict exactly when the sun is going to rise and when it's going to set, when the moon cycles are going. It's totally infallible. You know, the, 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 uh, the movement of Saturn and Jupiter and Mars and so forth, they're all totally predictable. And that's because the, spirit, the spiritual beings that have to do with those planets are the ones that are organizing it. You know, you think that the, it gets dark because the sun sets. That's not the reason it gets dark. It gets dark because spiritual beings pull the, the, the uh, darkness over the side of the planet that's away from the sun. Wait, say that again? Yeah. Spiritual beings pull the blanket of darkness over the side of the earth away from the sun. If you were to do a physical experiment, mm -hmm. you put the earth there, you put the sun there, and you're standing on this side, okay, you would see the streams of sunlight passing by if you looked up. You would actually see that. I mean, you can do that experiment for yourself. Yeah, but what are the spiritual beings that you're talking about that pull the blanket over? Elemental they, beings. They're elemental beings. They I used to be like beings like us, and then they're dead, and now they're beings no, that they're a different are dedicated they're to that. No, they're totally different. They're, they're not like us at all, you know. They're not like us at all. They're but spiritual th beings. Right. The, but did they job. ever used to be in human form? No. They've just always been a spiritual right, being, this is the only beings, job that they do? Yeah, right. That's exactly right. There's a whole host of these elemental beings. And where do you where do you get that information from? Rudolf Steiner. And where did he get it from? 
He investigated the spiritual world, clairvoyantly. See, every human being has latent in them what are called the organs of spiritual perception. And they reside in the chakras. And these are the lotus flowers, they're called. Right? And these are all lotus flowers that are closed. And as we develop spiritually, these lotus flowers will open up and they will become organs of spiritual perception. And Steiner gives exercises of how to do that. You know, and it's not necessarily everybody's going to be able to do that, because it's very difficult. I mean, I've read the books, and I'm saying, boy, this is really tough work. So, the thing is, is that he developed that in himself, and then he began to investigate the spiritual world clairvoyantly with the organs of spiritual perception as a scientific investigator, but in this case, a spiritual scientific investigator. Where are his papers? I, I had a hard time finding um, very many of his 450 papers. volumes. 450. Have you got me? You got a copy of my book, right? Mm hmm. Look in the bibliography there. There's a whole list of titles, which are the ones that, that are recommended to start out with. Well, he's listed in this book as well, but what I book? had a, um, The Art of Peace by. Um, Georgia Sala. Um, it's easier to find. Just go to Amazon, put in Rudolf Stein, okay. and a whole bunch of stuff comes up. Okay. And then you can actually get a catalog from the Anthroposophical Press free, and they'll send it to you, and you can look through it. And he has documented um, evidence of the spiritual no, beings pulling the darkness no, over? <laughs> no documented evidence, because mm. it's purely spiritual. See what, okay. But he has a very accurate... No, but I mean, he documented himself... Investigating the... Investigating that's how it I found out, because I read it... Witnessing it yeah, as I, it was happening. Right. And he mm -hmm. feels that he actually saw this. Yeah, he actually sees this. You see, that's the whole point. That's what, see, the reason why Steiner is so important for people to understand, I mean, he's very little known. He's not well known at all. Is that... I've read a couple of things that I was able to find. It's interesting, yeah. Yeah, they say the very least. <laughs> is that um, he, see, this knowledge that he came up with was not something that he invented, okay? He didn't quote unquote discover this. This knowledge has been known throughout human history in every continent Africa, uh, China, India, Japan, Europe, America. There have been mystery senses all over the world, since the beginning of humanity's... So there's other people that support his... Let me finish. There? Now these mystery schools, mystery centers, were in every single culture in the world. Dotted, but they were invisible, they were secret. They were not known to the general population. And they were basically the directors of the different cultures, the Egyptian, the Sumerian, the Tibetan, the Babylonian, etc., etc. They were the actually directed these spiritual mystery schools and centers of spiritual learning where the knowledge that Steiner divulged to the world was kept. Okay, now it was kept secret because it was thought that the general population, we weren't mature enough to get a hold of this stuff and take it, but take it. And that was true up until a certain point in time, which is, as I mentioned, was 1879. And Steiner said, okay, that time is over. It's time for this secret knowledge to be widely disseminated over the world as far and as wide as possible. And he, he attracted a lot of opposition from within the mystery schools. They actually didn't like the ones that were, so, were knowledgeable about what he was talking about, they said, no, you can't do that. And he, he attracted a lot of opposition. Plus, there are mystery schools where dark magic is practiced, who are also very highly developed, who did not want this to come out at all. You know? Car, I'm just wondering if we can just... Um 
get down to earth a little bit for me. Because um, the order of the universe is such a, you know, a strong principle in macrobiotics. And I really want to try to understand it. And I'm just wondering, how does our knowledge of, you know, like how the, you know, the sun and the moon goes, how, um, you know, the spring goes into, you know, um, summer into fall. How does all of that matter to, how does that affect us as far as us? We have to harmonize to ourselves. Yeah, but it. what does that mean? I don't understand. It means you eat local food. Grains uh -huh. and vegetables, locally grown, cooked, locally grown grains and vegetables in season in the locality where you live. Well, how about because, more than that, though? Huh? I mean, how about more than just like cooking and eating? What does that mean? Like, order, even when we talk about the order of animals, what does that mean to me? You know, that animals will do certain things and that's their nature. I mean, I don't really understand that, but it seems like it's a really important thing to understand. The thing about nature is, you have to understand it's a democracy. It's a true democracy where every single uh, member of the hierarchy of the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom and the mineral kingdom are all working together. They all, in other words, now they're not working together consciously. You know, and say, well, I'm doing... But the way nature has been set up is that if there were no felines, for instance, okay, no carnivores, that means the herbivores would overrun the place, they would eat out of the place, and everything would die off. So there's a balance there. The, 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 the lions and the leopards and the cheetahs and the hyenas and the, the jackals and the coyotes and the foxes and the wolves their job is to keep the population of rodents and big deer and other animals in check so that they, they don't uh, overrun the place, eat out all the, all the pasture, and everybody dies off. So that's where the balance is. So you have to observe nature and see how nature, where everything is codependent, that if there was no minerals, no soil, nothing could grow. So the plant kingdom is dependent upon the mineral kingdom. If there were no plants, there could be no herbivores. So the animals are dependent on the plant and mineral kingdom. Now, human beings, we are actually omnivores, and we are, you know, if you look at, look at our dentition, we are, have a dentition set up in such a manner that if you, if you study it, you say we have 60% of our dentures are for grinding grains and seeds and beans. And 20% and of them are for cutting vegetables. Oh, and meat. the rest are for tearing meat. So our diet, you know, should be approximately, you know, that's just a guide. So we need, we are dependent upon the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom, and the mineral kingdom. And, uh, and that's all a harmony and a balance, and we don't mess it up. Which, of course, we have been doing for, you know, since the advent of the Industrial Revolution. Because we started to mechanize everything, and instead of farming and agriculture being a craft of husbandry, where we do crop rotation, we do crop management in the sense that we don't have monoculture, you know, we grow crops that are, we understand how certain plants are symbiotic with other plants and they help each other grow, and we understand how certain plants are good to have because they keep the insects away, well, that's gone out the window, you know, so we have mono, so, so we've taken things, we made things out of balance, so that's the nature balance, but the point is that's all ordered and managed spiritually from the spiritual world by the hierarchies. You know, the, the hierarchies of the, the, the angels, archangels, they all have different roles to play. Now, but as I said, we've been given the, uh, our, our independence. We have been, so to speak, the, the speaking kind of, you know, uh, Oh, what I, what's the proper word? 